What is this? We'll give you some hints. It's native to Indonesia. It's a critically endangered species. It's a type of primate. This is a slow loris, specifically a Javan slow loris. These animals are on the verge of extinction in the wild because of illegal hunting, habitat loss, and being trafficked in the illegal pet trade. In fact, these slow lorises were taken from people who might have been keeping them as pets. There are seven in the group. They've been rehabilitated to make sure they're healthy and behaving normally. And now they've been reintroduced to their native habitat on the Indonesian island of Java. The slow lorises will spend the rest of their days in a national park in a place that was chosen because there's plenty of food, not a lot of natural predators, and less of a chance that people will poach them. A controversy over cursive is our next topic on the world from A to Z. I'm Carl Azus. Thank you so much for watching. In 2014, National Public Radio posted a headline that read, The writing's on the wall for cursive unless lawmakers can save it. That was the year when Common Core standards in American education no longer required cursive penmanship to be taught. In many places, according to NPR, school districts had already stopped teaching it. But several of the 45 states that adopted the national standards pushed back on this idea. They wanted cursive to remain part of elementary curriculum, so it became mandatory in some individual states, even though it wasn't nationally. California is an interesting case study here. The Golden State hadn't required cursive since 2010, but this year it just became mandatory again in elementary schools. Why is there a debate over this? Well, some argue that in a digital world where most people are texting and typing and sending information electronically, there's no point to cursive. Laptops have replaced pen and paper in many schools, and while researchers say writing by hand has a number of educational benefits, from improving memory to improving reading skills, what's less clear is if writing in cursive instead of print has any advantages. Those who support joined italics, another term for cursive, say it improves fine motor skills, it helps focus the brain on the words being written, it's believed to have benefits for students with dyslexia, and that it will preserve Americans' ability to read historic documents like the Constitution. We'd love to hear your take on whether learning cursive is worthwhile. Teachers, please share your class's thoughts under today's show at youtube.com slash at the world A to Z. When it comes to cancer detection, pathologists typically review slides under a microscope to help determine a diagnosis. At our institute, we've launched a digital pathology program, which allows us to convert that class slide into millions of pixels, which can be reviewed remotely uh, by a second pathologist. Dr. Anil Parwani with The Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center says they're now testing new technology involving artificial intelligence using algorithms to detect and grade cancer. When we are detecting cancer using glass slides under the microscope, we are limited to how many people can see it, how many people I can consult with. But once it's in a digital format, not only can an expert review it, but we can then apply artificial intelligence algorithms to detect cancer. Parwani says the algorithms can be trained to detect specific types of the disease like prostate or breast cancer and not only catch the cancer, but also determine how much cancer is present in the biopsy and potentially may provide information to help with the prognosis of the disease. So we are in a very exciting time in diagnostic pathology because we have all these new tools available to us which can help oncologists, which can help cancer patients like never before. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. On this date in world history. January 24th, 1848, a man named James Marshall was working on a sawmill in California when he noticed something shiny in the water of the American River. After taking a closer look, he told his boss that he'd found gold. They tried to keep that a secret, but... 
Within months, tens of thousands of prospectors overran the area as the California Gold Rush was on. On this date in 1962, retired baseball great Jackie Robinson, the first African American to play in the major leagues, became the first African American elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. 1962 was the first year he was eligible for the honor. And on January 24th, 1972, a Japanese soldier named Shoichi Yokoi was found hiding in the jungles of Guam. He'd been there since 1944 when American troops took control of the island during World War II, and Yokoi spent decades trying to avoid being captured as that was considered shameful for a Japanese soldier. He went back home to Japan, though it's said he was never content with how society had changed after the war. Expert analysis. Famicom was an early video game console made by what company? Nintendo, Atari, Sega, Commodore. The Famicom, which was short for Family Computer, was redesigned, rebranded, and released in the US as the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. For years, an event called Awesome Games Done Quick has raised money for charity by featuring gamers playing games really quickly. One of these live week-long fundraisers just wrapped up early this week in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It reportedly raised more than two and a half million dollars for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And even a dog got into the action, receiving applause and treats by hitting the pause button? Five, four, four three, three, two, two ready? One. Go! Good luck, Good luck. What you are watching is an example of speedrunning a video game. In this instance, the 2001 Nintendo title, Super Monkey Ball. Speedrunning is, put simply, the act of completing a video game as fast as possible. We got a $3,000 donation. Thank you so much for that donation. What? This particular speedrun is part of the annual charity fundraiser, Awesome Games Done Quick, a week-long event running nonstop 24 hours a day. Games Done Quick runs multiple events a year for fundraising for charities. For this event, uh, Awesome Games Done Quick, we're raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Even on the GDQ stage, this, this level hates me. The player speedrunning Super Monkey Ball goes by Helix 13. And while they agree there is added pressure performing in front of both a live and streaming audience, they truly enjoy what they do. I live for these marathons. I enjoy it so much. And to be able to do the thing that I do best to entertain people and raise money for charity. It is, the feeling is unmatched. <gasps> Get the cheese out. You ready? Button. Oh boy. Awesome Games Done Quick doesn't focus only on speed running because as this reporter experienced, watching a dog play the 1985 Nintendo game Gyromite is must see streaming. Want some ham? Button. The organizers believe anyone can enjoy the entertainment on display at their events. I'd say, hey, come watch so, uh, watch your games played in a way you've never seen them played before and come donate to a great cause. The money goes straight to charity and uh, have fun and enjoy yourself while you watch. Oh, get in there. Time. All right. <laughs> Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Perth Amboy is a city in the Garden State. It's home to Perth Amboy High School, and that's where Mr. Ortiz's and Mr. Eric's classes are watching in New Jersey. Hope you're having an awesome day there. And out west, in the Grand Canyon State of Arizona, we've got Miss Bader's class online today. Hello to everyone watching at Desert Shadows Middle School, the one in Nogales. In simple terms, today's What in the World segment could be described as an uphill race. But this event is far more complicated, far more muddy, and some would say far more entertaining than getting from A to B. The Gold Star Sporting Trials are held on the slick hills of Northern England in January. Participating vehicles have no four-wheel drive and no mud tires. Instead, there are passengers who try to help the car get traction by fleeing themselves in every conceivable direction. The goal? To get as far as possible through a twisty, slippery hillside course with flagpoles. And while it might look incredibly frustrating, the group that organizes this says it's the most fun you can have on four wheels. 
It's a thoroughly muddered event where every car is muddified, everyone gets in a muddle, and it can be kind of muddening if someone slings smack talk like, here's mud in your eye, and someone else responds, quit being a stick in the mud and go mud your own business. If someone goes into beast mud and says mud up or shut up, it's easy to see how every argument can become a mud flat. I'm Carl Azuz, getting bogged down in puns, and it mud my day to bring you this show. Hope you enjoyed it, and that you come on back tomorrow. You mean the world to me.